Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Welcome to Relevance for today. Christmas time. I just want to share with you the story about Christmas with Jesus. Stay tuned, folks. Great time of year. Great time to think about Jesus Christ and God and what he did for us. Stay tuned. That morn's in lonely Hey, okay, folks, we are back. So I'm here. I want to share with you Christmas time. Oh, shoot. Wait a minute. Forgot my hat. Oops, wrong hat. One second. There. Okay, so we are back. Got to get in a little Christmas spirit here. Got to put the Santa hat on. Hey, folks, listen. Christmas time. I love the hat. Okay, so anyway, that time of year... I know it's crazy, folks running around spending all kind of money and thinking about everything else but Jesus, right? Birth of Jesus Christ. Yes, we do know that Jesus was not born on December 25th because actually over in Bethlehem in those areas over there, it's also their winter time. So December over there, uh, you could look it up online. Their temperatures get as low as 40 degrees outside. So you could only imagine if the shepherds were up in the mountains, up in the hills and the valleys with their sheep at nighttime, 40 degrees, temperatures probably a little colder than that in the mountains. So they would probably freeze to death. It would not have been good. Little baby in a manger. It just wouldn't have been good. So the bottom line is, we know it was at a different time. Historians say it was later in the year and so forth. But you know what? We are actually taking the time to honor our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ, by honoring him on a day and naming it his birthday. What harm is that? None at all. We're giving focus to our Lord. That's what it's all about. So I'm not going to get into a big explanation about that. I just want to share that real quick. And I would like to go ahead and read this to you folks. There's many folks out there too. Just keep in mind, one of the things my dad used to pray, and I'm sure, and he still does, but he would pray and say, he would also pray and thank God for all the blessings, but he would pray for those who don't have anything, that they will have something one day. Because while we're inside and getting our gifts and unwrapping them and, oh, look what I got, look at these, look at that, there's many who don't even have a home to live in. You know, this is the time of year, and we should be thinking about this all year round, but this is the time of year we should be thinking about the homeless. We should be thinking about the folks who have no food. Not the reason why they don't have it. We should be thinking about getting them food, blessing them with food, blessing them with a place to live, some place to put over their head, things like that. It's a time when you want to, and I'm looking around to see if I had anything, um, but I don't. But I was just looking around to see if I had something that, you know, you'd say, oh, great, I got a bowl here, you know, got a nice bowl here. Thank you, got that, you know, shined it up for the office. But the bottom line is what I'm getting at is, you know, it's all about gifts. It's all about, oh, shoot, I want that new hat with the American flag on it. Military. Yes, Lewis, my son, love you. Um, but things like that. We get all these new gifts. We're looking forward to finding out what we can buy, what we can spend all our money on. What's the latest and greatest new phone? What's the latest and greatest computer? All these things. But we need to start thinking of others. There's so many out there who are hurting. You don't realize the elderly. Same thing. There's elderly out there who, especially in our country, I can only speak for our country, but if you know of needs in your country, share them with us so we'll definitely be able to pray. But the bottom line is, there's elderly who have to decide on whether they're going to eat or buy medication, whether they're going to heat their home or they're going to eat something. And there's so many challenges like that going on right now. Yes, it's 2019, but these things are really happening. So keep that in mind this season and after. As we go into 2020, focus on love, focus on being Christ-like, focus on thinking of others who don't have and seeing what you do have and bless them when you have that opportunity. That's what it's about. Jesus went around doing good, healing those who were oppressed by the devil, healing, feeding. He fed the 5,000. Why did he feed the 5,000? Because he could. And there was a need, and he took care of it. And he didn't do it by himself. He blessed it, prayed over it, took it, broke it, handed it to the disciples. The disciples 
got out there and we're the hands and feet of Jesus. That's what we need to do as the body of Christ, same thing. We need to get out, folks, boots to the ground. Time to take a militant stance and get up and get out. It's time to put boots to the ground. We've been trained long enough. We need to get out here and do that. And that's a rant, and I just went on one. So <laughs> anyway, folks, I just want to share on that. I want to read to you this amazing story. I'm going to be reading out of the New King James, the Thomas Nelson that I told you about in the last episode, font 17. It's perfect, even for the days when you forget your reading glasses. So here we have it, folks. So we are talking about Jesus's birth. So I'm just going to read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 15, the birth of Jesus Christ, Christ born of Mary, Christ born of Mary. And it came to pass in those days that a, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius, Quirinius sorry, was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his brother, I'm sorry, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people, all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that's beautiful, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Beautiful, huh? Beautiful. Jesus born of Mary as a gift to us. And you know where I'm turning to. And this fulfilled what God had said because Jesus said it as he walked with the disciples in John 3.16. And I like throwing 17 in, as you all know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that was the day he gave his son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Folks, there it is. Jesus born on that day, just like the beautiful song, silent night, holy night, Jesus was born to save us. God in the form of a man came down, grew up from a child, learned how to walk, stumbled, fell, all that stuff, learned how to eat everything, even used the bathroom just like we do. Came up in the form of a man, grew up, went out and did his ministry at age 30. By the age of 33 and a half, hung on the cross for you and for me. It's beautiful, folks. God loved us that much. What he went through, unbelievable. It's a beautiful thing. So remember that this Christmas, folks, keep that in mind, what God did for us, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, thinking of others, goodwill to all men, 
Think of those who are hurting. Think of those who are suffering. Think of those who are spending the night on the street while we're in the comfort of our homes, eating all the food we want to eat while they barely have anything to eat. Think about that. Think about that the next time you pass someone on the highways and the byways when you see them out saying, hungry, need help. Don't let the enemy make you think about all the things they could be doing and, well, why aren't they working and why this, why that. Do it out of the kindness of your heart. Show the love of Jesus Christ. Pray for them. Be that hand up. I got my hand over here. Be that hand up. Right? Be the hand up. Not just a handout. Help them get up off the street. Help them get up on their feet. That's what it's all about. The love. Time of love should be spread throughout the year. All right, with that being said... God bless you guys. I'm going to go ahead and pray. So, Heavenly Father, just thank you for this opportunity to share the message of the birth of Jesus. We thank you so much for sending your son down as a sacrifice for us so that we all could have the opportunity to be saved, to be the ultimate sacrifice. That journey that you went on, everything you did, everything you taught, everything you suffered for us, for the viewers, for the listeners, as well as for me. We just thank you for that, Lord. I just ask that you just bless each and every individual watching this video and listening to the sound of my voice. Bless them this Christmas season and beyond. May the season of giving and love just overflow into the next months and not just be a one-time thing or a Thanksgiving thing or a Christmas thing, but a daily way of living thing so that we can help all those and help them up on their feet and help them when they're in need of food. Help them when they're in need of clothing. Help them when they have no roof over their head. Lord, we just ask you to bless each and every individual out there listening to the sound of my voice and watching this video once again. Thank you for them, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to do what I do so that we all can be blessed, so that you get the glory, so we can thank God for you for the messages that you give me through the Holy Spirit. Bless all those out there listening who are hurting and suffering, all those who have lost loved ones, Bless them all, Lord. Give them the peace that surpasses all understanding that can only come from you. And just thank you for all the blessings and the honor. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. There you have it, folks. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. You know I love you no matter what part of the world you're in. Love you all. Different parts of the world, different countries. Shout out to you. Take care of yourselves. Love one another. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. God bless. Peace.